Hello and welcome. I'm Charlene Mingus, Active Transportation Planner with the Baltimore Metropolitan Council, or BMC. Uh, thank you for taking the time to join us today. Uh, we're supporting our local member, Hartford County, by developing a bicycle and pedestrian concept plan for US 40 in Hartford County along an approximately five mile stretch from the city of Aberdeen to the city of Habit of Grace. This concept plan can be used to guide the development of a shared use path that serves bicyclists, pedestrians, wheelchair users, and other active transportation users. Today, we'll present the preferred concepts for this project study area, which are recommended for further study. These are the westbound option and the combined option. You're also invited to a public open house, which will be held in person at the Habit of Grace Activity Center on Thursday, February 9th, 2023. Um, you all are invited to stop by any time between 6 and 7.30 p.m. to learn more about ongoing projects, uh, more about the ongoing project, view concepts recommended for further study, review feedback received at the first meeting, public meeting, and provide additional feedback. Um, we're also in the second public comment period, which is open until February 22nd, 2023, and we want to hear your questions and feedback on the project. To do that, visit www.publicinput.com backslash US40 bike ped, and then click on the share your thoughts tab to post questions and give feedback. You can also sign up for the email list on the project page to receive updates about the project. So at this time, I'd like to thank Harford County, the city of Aberdeen and the city of Habitat Grace for their support. And um, Joel Gallahue, Chief of Long Range Planning at Hartford County will now share a few words. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for joining us today. We're really glad to have this project underway. Uh, I represent the county, but there's two other local agencies, the municipalities of uh, Abbey Grace and Aberdeen that have been collaborating on this project. And we're grateful for their support. Uh, BMC and the Baltimore Regional Transportation Board support our, all the local members by lending, leading regional projects such as this one. Um, one of my roles uh, is uh, serving as the chair of the technical committee with the Baltimore Regional Transportation Board. This is the kind of project that we really would like to see more of and the technical committee has been supporting. Uh, so we're really glad to have your participation for this presentation and thank you very much. Thank you. And um, I will now, well, the design team will now share the presentation. So I'll hand that off to them. Hello, I am Romain Kassaker. I'm a landscape architect and project manager with AECOM, the consultant. The agenda for this presentation will cover the project overview and purpose. We'll look at public meeting number one feedback. We'll look at concepts overview and the preferred concepts. Preliminary impacts and cost estimates. What our next steps will be when the public comment period is open. And then we'll look at questions and Q&A. For the project overview, US 40 from the Aberdeen train station to Erie Street in Haverty Grace, just west of the Hayden Bridge, presents the limits of the project as seen by the purple outline. The purpose of the project is to provide a concept level of design for a comfortable, convenient, and safe shared use path along US 40 that connects to transit and neighborhoods. You will see option one we call westbound, which is on the northern side of US 40, option two eastbound on the southern side, and option three is a combined option that uses a partial segment from the westbound option and a partial segment of the eastbound option. Here are some existing conditions photos to give you an example of the typical conditions found in the corridor. And there is some sidewalk at some locations and wide shoulder at others. What is a shared use path? Well, it's a dedicated facility for pedestrians and bicyclists, and it's a multi-use facility, and it's physically separated from the roadway 
by an open space or a barrier, but none of our options today include a barrier, just open space. The recommended width will be 10 feet, paved with asphalt typically, and it will be separated from the roadway. Here are some example photos of other trails in the region. And you can see that the trail is separated from the roadway with green space. The trail concept will include stormwater management and landscaping. Stormwater management can consist of bioswales. It's a, a great measure that's vegetated. It's a shallow depression or ditch, and it collects runoff and treats it and infiltrates the stormwater runoff. It may be used in the green zone between US 40 roadway and the path. And the roadway safety clear zone issues may limit tree plantings because the clear zone is for primarily vehicular recovery and for safety, trees cannot be planted within approximately 30 feet of the travel lane of US 40. But those details will be determined in later stages of design. They're not being resolved in these concepts. In the development of the concept plan, we've looked at existing conditions documentation. We have developed alternatives. We've already held public meeting number one. Preferred concepts have been selected as described. And where we are in the process now is this public meeting number two. And after that, we'll be working on the final concept plan. Some of the comments and feedback from public meeting number one included the following questions and responses. Would you use a shared use path along US 40? Likely is the answer for the majority of the respondents. 15% uh, for unsure and 12% for unlikely. Which shared use path option do you prefer? And the response was the westbound option. 26% indicated the combined option and 26% no preference, 15% the eastbound option and 4% other. Users should be safely separated from US 40 traffic was a primary comment that we received. It's important to provide safe pedestrian and bicycle crossings of US 40 at major intersections was another significant comment that we have addressed. I'll ask uh, Charlene to talk about the FAQs. Thank you. So we received multiple questions during the first phase of feedback from the community. Um, these responses and many more are also available on the project um, page. So one of the first, one of the things we heard often was, will the Otsego Street, Ohio Street and US 40 intersection be reconfigured as a part of this project? Um, the concept plan currently under development will not include reconfiguration of this intersection. Um, however, the intersection is included in the 2022 Hartford County priority letter and has been included in the yearly priority letter since 2010. Um, so this has been a priority for the county. Maryland County submit their transportation priorities annually to the Maryland Department of Transportation State Highway Administration. The priority letters assist in state selection of the proposed major capital projects for inclusion in the construction program of the Consolidated Transportation Program, also known as the CTP. Um, this is the six-year capital budget for state transportation projects. Um, another question that we had is funding available for this project. Um, Apologize. Um, the project is currently funded for completion of this concept plan. Uh, funding hasn't been identified for future phases of design and construction at this point. However, the project will be eligible to apply for a variety of state and federal funding programs that could fund future phases of this project. Um, and this project will not increase taxes in Hartford County. Um, last question that we heard a lot about is why doesn't the project include crossing of the Susquehanna River on the Thomas J. Hato Memorial Bridge. 
Um, we recognize that pedestrian and bicycle access across the Susquehanna River is vital to connect Hartford and Cecil counties for regional connectivity and for connectivity of the East Coast Greenway. The scope of this concept plan is limited to the five mile segment from the city of Aberdeen to the city of Habitat Grace at Erie Street. Exploration of a bicycle and pedestrian connection across the Susquehanna River, potentially across the Thomas J. Hayden Memorial Bridge, will require a separate study due to the complexity of design and coordination. Uh, the concept plan currently under development for the area between the city of Aberdeen and Habitat Grace will include a recommendation for future studies to explore bike and pedestrian crossing opportunities across the Susquehanna. Thank you. Now we'll get into the concepts to overview, the project limits, Aberdeen train station to Erie Street and Haverty Grace, approximately five miles. The three concepts again are the westbound on the northern side, option two is eastbound on the southern side, and option three is a combined option using segments from each of the options one and two. The, this is planning level. We have no detailed topographic survey information yet, and that would be uh, obtained in the next phase of design. We are looking at a 10 foot width shared use path with a grass buffer between the trail and the roadway. A reduced width where necessary to avoid obstacles to reduce the 10 foot to an eight foot would be used only when it is necessary, but not expected in very many locations. The project will be ADA compliant. All curb ramps would meet ADA. At intersections, pedestrian signals would be upgraded with audible signals and countdown displays to meet ADA compliance. The Eastern terminus at Erie Street, just west of the Hayden Bridge, instead of at the Hayden Bridge is the terminus that is being planned. Looking at the opportunities and constraints for each option, we'll go through these quickly. Option one on the left, westbound, northern side, the opportunities include that a wide shoulder is present that can be used for the trail. That means less environmental impacts. It requires less potential property acquisition of easements or property to provide the necessary area to construct the trail. And it's located on the north side of US 40, which has a larger nearby residential population. Its constraints include multiple stream crossings and at least one pedestrian bridge of about 12 foot width would be required. There are existing utilities, underground and overhead, and our goal is to minimize utility relocation, and some low retaining walls may be required. Option two is not recommended for study, and it had a great number of constraints, including impacts to streams and forests. The proposed Amtrak property impacts would be present if that option was selected. There's higher construction costs because of walls and stream crossings. And that's a stressful and potentially unsafe crossing of the on-ramp from Maryland 22. Option three is the combined option. And it has a lot of opportunities that include the westbound north side segment that serves the larger residential population. The eastbound south side segment provides improved access to Haverty Grace. There is access to the Haverty Grace Activity Center and Middle High School. But the constraints include no existing sidewalk from Lewis Lane to south of Ohio Street due to significant environmental constraints. A significant portion of the eastbound and south side segment is a complex design and construction due to guardrail, signing, steep slopes, and forest impacts. The higher construction costs for the eastbound south side segment due to retaining walls would also, re to reduce impacts, would also be a constraint due to additional costs. 
All right, and I'll pick up from here. My name is Josh Cronkleton. I'm a transportation planner with AECOM, and I'll run through now and discuss the uh, preferred concepts that uh, Ro just indicated. Uh, here is an overview showing the westbound option as a green solid line and the combined option partially westbound and, and partially eastbound option with an orange dash line. <clears throat> should be noted that any shared use path along US 40 could then act as a, a spine to make other connections throughout the area as those connections become available in the future. All right, first, well, we'll discuss a typical section overview. A uh, typical section in terms of a design is the just what it sounds like uh, at any point in the roadway, typically how that roadway looks. Um, in the case of US 40, we have a uh, two typical sections, uh, an open section and a closed section, which I'll discuss. First one shown here, an open section, meaning there's no curb and gutter present um, on the roadway. Um, on the upper half of the screen, you see the existing condition on US 40 with the proposed condition uh, on the bottom half of the screen with the shared use path in place. This is looking in the uh, this is looking at it from the westbound concept standpoint. Uh, if we were to look at it uh, for the eastbound concept, it would just be a mirror image with the shared use path on the right side of the screen instead. Here you can see the the ten foot paved shoulder um, with the from the travel lanes with then a sixteen foot grass buffer between that and the shared use path. This is generally in the uh, center section of the uh, the corridor between Aberdeen and Haverda Grace in areas with a higher speed limit of 55 miles per hour. Um, then we have a closed section. Closed section meaning uh, there is curb and gutter present. Um, you can see <clears throat> an existing uh, US 40 typical section on the top section of the screen here. Um, and then the proposed on the bottom. And for this closed section, we are proposing to use some of the wide shoulder space available in US 40 to construct uh, the shared use uh, path. Um, this is generally in areas with a 30 to 45 mile per hour speed limit. And between the travel lane, the reduced shoulder and the path, we have the uh, a green space bioswale uh, or grass swale shown. So in this, we have a minimum of a 10 foot buffer between uh, the shared use trail and the uh, travel lane. Another option is closed section with shoulder, where instead of using some of the shoulder space to construct the swale and path, we leave the shoulder as is and construct uh, to the outside. Uh, minimum 10 foot buffer as well. This is in areas generally with 45 mile per hour speed limit. And it should be noted, you can see the utility poles present on these typical sections. And the goal is to minimize and avoid impacts to these utility poles. Uh, so we're showing a separation from those uh, utility poles. Here we have a study area overview showing uh, the different speed limits. You can see in downtown Aberdeen, we go from 30 miles per hour, uh, increasing up to 55 miles per hour in the uh, center of the corridor, and then going down to 45 miles per hour in the, on the Haverda Gray side of the corridor. Um, and this is uh, pointing out each of the different typical sections that applies to those particular segments as discussed in the previous few slides. Okay, and now I'll uh, dive a little deeper into each of the two preferred options. First, well, we'll discuss the westbound option and I'll run through a series of plan sheets that show uh, what that concept for the shared use path would look like as we move from Aberdeen up to Haverda Grace. So here we are starting uh, with this sheet in downtown Aberdeen at uh, Bel Air Avenue across from the train station, um, and we'll be heading towards Haverda Grace. Uh, you'll see uh, we have some call out boxes along the way pointing out some, some features or notes or comments. Um, at signalized intersections throughout the corridor, we call out potential crossing locations where the westbound trail could cross US 40 safely to access the other side. So starting at downtown Aberdeen, uh, we have potential lane narrowing uh, to accommodate the trail. Otherwise, the existing wide sidewalk would be used at this uh, end of the, the corridor. As we moved east of Franklin Street, that's when we start using the, the shoulder for the the shared use path. 
And you can see as I move along each of these plan sheets, the light blue shading represents uh, the 100 year floodplain, which is um, always considered in design of roadway or shared use paths um, to uh, minimize impacts. And it also should be noted that this concept, all these concepts are based solely on GIS level data. No uh, topographic or detailed survey information was available for this concept phase. So everything is based at high level GIS data. So as we continue moving east, uh, we uh, have a safe crossing of the US 40 off ramp to Maryland 22. Um, Roe indicated that the eastbound option that was not chosen for further study had an unsafe crossing of the traffic exiting Maryland 22 onto US 40. Uh, this side of the roadway provides a safer crossing with uh, vehicles decelerating from US 40 and then uh, going uphill to access Maryland 22. Um, you'll notice as, as we go through these plan sheets that the yellow line representing the shared youth path doesn't just travel in a straight line. Um, it'll, you know, go in and out at times. And this is usually the case of driveway crossings, or in this case here, a uh, trail bump out for a turn lane on uh, US 40 to access Beard Hill Road. So that's just a, to call out why it's not a straight line just alongside US 40. Continuing to the east, um, we're pointing out uh, the culvert extensions um, that are uh, possible along US 40. And also uh, here, we're calling out a potential pedestrian bridge. There are some structures, some bridge structures along US 40 where um, if there's enough existing shoulder space available on the bridge structure to accommodate the trail, um, that's great. If not, in areas like this, we're calling out potential pedestrian bridges, which would need to be constructed adjacent to the existing structure that cannot accommodate the shared use path. Um, in future phases of design uh, and additional or in, when additional engineering occurs, uh, this could be maybe a boardwalk or something else. At this stage, worst case scenario, uh, we're calling them pedestrian bridges, uh, separate bridge structures. So you'll see one there. As we continue east, uh, another crossing identified potentially at Oakington Road um, to access the other side of US 40. Uh, continuing east, uh, additional uh, culvert extensions identified. And this is the uh, open section of US 40 without curb and gutter that I uh, discussed earlier. Another crossing location identified here potentially at Post Road. And I should note that all of these plan sheets uh, will be available or are available on the project website for uh, further uh, viewing. Additional culvert extensions as we continue along US 40. Here at Lewis Lane, uh, another potential crossing location and a connection point to the on-road East Coast Greenway route is called out. And then approaching Otsego Street and, uh, and Haver de Grace, another potential crossing location and connection to the on-road East Coast Greenway route. And the team fully recognizes the complexity of the Otsego Street, Ohio Street, uh, US 40 intersection uh, as identified uh, and discussed with the FAQs. Um, this is a complex intersection, but if this eastbound or this westbound concept for the shared use path is uh, chosen for construction, um, this intersection would be configured in a way to maximize pedestrian safety, whether that's a pedestrian refuge uh, in each of the legs. Um, that would be de determined in later design stages, but there would it would be designed uh, with pedestrian safety in mind. As we approach Erie Street, uh, there, it's a divided highway uh, on US 40, so there is no crossing um, proposed there. But the study team has proposed a spur along Park Drive down to Superior Street uh, to um, allow users uh, from downtown Haver de Grace to access the trail to and from Superior Street, traveling up Superior Street and directly accessing the, the trail on Park Drive to continue along US 40, as opposed to having to um, cross US 40 at some other location to get onto the, the trail. 
So that is the westbound concept. Now we'll discuss uh, the combined option a little in a little more detail. Um, it should be noted that for the first seven plan sheets, the combined option is the exact same as the westbound option that I just went through um, with the shared use path being on the westbound side of the of the roadway. So here I will just take a closer look at the crossing of uh, at Lewis Lane and then how this uh, path differs going to um, Erie Street. So here at Lewis Lane, the, the crossing location to switch over from the westbound shared use path over to the eastbound shared use path, uh, connection to the on-road East Coast Greenway route, along with enhanced access down to the middle and high school. This is the area that uh, was identified um, as having no existing sidewalk present. So it does present, there are some uh, environmental and construction constraints present in this location from Lewis Lane heading east, um, but not insurmountable. As we move for, uh, further to the east, uh, Otsego Street, connection to the east coast, on road east coast greenway route. And uh, again, the team recognizes that this crossing of Otsego Street is slightly less complex than the crossing on uh, for the westbound side, as you're only crossing one leg of a roadway as opposed to both Otsego and Ohio Street. Um, but again, if the option, the westbound option is proposed, it would be designed as a safe crossing as well. Um, and then here we end at Erie Street, divided highway, no crossing proposed on US 40. So a little bit uh, more details about these two concepts, preliminary impacts and costs. Again, I'll note that this is all based on preliminary GIS data. And once further engineering um, occurs with detailed topographic survey information available, all of these impacts and costs will be further refined. Um, but this is preliminary uh, planning level to just get an idea of how these uh, two options compare to one another. So for the westbound option, you'll see, and when you compare them to each other, you'll see the uh, the combined option has slightly more commercial impacts, um, and um, you'll see that the the westbound option has a slightly more impacts to city of Havre de Grace property, and that's just based on where these alignments fall along the on, on which side of the corridor. Um, impacts again would be further refined at later stages um, and minimized as appropriate. Um, neither of these have Amtrak impacts. Um, and then in terms of preliminary costs for the westbound option, the estimated construction costs for the shared use path along westbound US 40 that was shown on the plan sheets is 8.9 million translating to a cost per mile of 1.78 million, not including right of way. And for the combined option, partially westbound, partially eastbound, the estimated construction cost uh, for that shared use path option, as shown on the plan, is 9.75 million, with a cost per mile of 1.95 million, not including right of way. So, slightly increased costs for the combined option. Uh, in terms of next steps, um, the public comment period on these preferred concepts uh, is open from January 25th through February 22nd, 2023. Um, then using the comments received during the comment period, the final concept plan will be de developed in February and March, 2023. And I'll hand it back off to Charlene to wrap up. Thank you. Um, thank you for joining us today. Please um, share additional comments and questions about the project through February 22nd by visiting publicinput.com like backslash US40 bike ped and clicking on the share your thoughts tab. You can also sign up for the email list on the project page to receive updates on the project. Or you can email us at US40 bike ped at publicinput.com. You can also leave a voicemail at 1-855-925-2801 extension 4009. You can text with keyword US40 bike ped to the number 73224. Um, and even through Twitter by tagging at Balto Metro CO or at Be More Involved and use the hashtag BRTB lessons. 
So thank you so much for joining us today and we look forward to hearing your comments.